Hi there, hope you're well. In the workshop this week, we're going to put my DIY peanut to carcass jig directly up against my Lamello Zeta P2 with the tensor connectors. So yes, this video is kind of a continuation of last week's when I made the DIY uh, carcass jig for the peanut 2 system. If you haven't seen that video, I recommend you going and taking a look. There's a link up there or links down there because this video is going to make a lot more sense if you've seen that one. Um, long story short though, I've talked about the peanut 2 system before and the peanut 2 jigs. And one of the comments that comes up fairly regularly is, oh, it looks a bit slow and a bit finicky. And my standard response to that is, well, it's a jig and router system. You know, it's never going to be as fast as a dedicated power tool, especially one the price of the Lamello. And yet it got me thinking, what do you need to do to make it faster? And I thought that one of the things we could do is to actually make a dedicated jig for making carcasses, because if you're anything like me, most of the carcasses you make are going to be similar sort of sizes. So making a jig for a 550 mil carcass or a 600 mil deep carcass isn't exactly onerous. And that's what I went through last week. Uh, in fact, I'm going to be making two carcasses today because I'm going to use them at the other end of the workshop. They're 600 mil deep. I've made a jig for that for my... Uh, peanut two jig and dedicated router and then I'm going to make another one with the Lamello Zeta P2. Before we get to that directly let me just show you what we're going to make and I'll point out a couple of the pitfalls that we're going to hit along the way. The carcass itself fits really neatly under the bench at the moment so we don't want to change the size of it. It's 680 high. It's got a 70 mil plinth at the bottom. I want a full width, shallow draw at the top for odds and ends. And we're going to have a central divider there and have two unequal sized drawers underneath. These drawers are going to have the same sort of handle cutouts as all the others have. Uh, the plywood boxes that I did, that's a long back. And the sides are going to come full height like so. Now this isn't a complicated build but it's a little bit finicky because the only ones the only joints that I can use the fence on are these two top corners here where they butt together absolutely like that. But all the others are going to be mid panel joints so a little bit of careful marking out to do on all these. Um, that's why I've made this mid-panel jig as well for my peanut cutter because uh, obviously the one with a fence on won't do that and if you're a patron supporter or a YouTube member you'd have seen me making that jig. In fact I'll tell you what I'll, I'll make that video available as a public one. I'll put a link in the video description down below so that everybody can have a look at that as well. Uh, it's not difficult it's just a question of making sure the stops match up with the with the uh, jig with the fence on. Now, the only Part of this that I won't be able uh, to use the jig on, my homemade jig, is for the plinth because obviously that jig is designed for the depth of the carcass whereas the plinth runs across the width so I will have to use the uh, Intelligent Fixings mini jig for that one. Now, I just want to say that this isn't going to be a race, it's not a contest. I just want to see if a DIY jig and a dedicated router setup could be broadly comparable in a sort of semi-production capacity to something like the Lamello at a much, much cheaper price. I'm going to be running both these builds at the same time, switching back and forth between the two. And right now I'm using the DIY jig with the fence to machine the ends of the carcass for the peanut connectors. Incidentally, all the build video is running at eight times normal speed in order to fit it all in. But there are links in the video description to the full build of each carcass at twice normal speed if you want to see them in detail. And on the Lamello, I've started on my mid-panel fixings, referencing directly off the actual plinth and divider. You can do this when you have a base and a face to work off on a tool like this one. Back with the peanut, I've switched to the fenceless jig for the mid-panel fixings and notice how I'm using a piece of 6mm scrap inside the cutouts to line the jig up with a pencil mark. Okay. 
So after 10 minutes, it's pretty even. The lamello looks like it's slightly further ahead, but the cabinet ends aren't completed yet, just the mid panels, because it's easier to do all of those together rather than chop and change between the fence and the foot. And because I've referenced off the base of the lamello and the carcass ends, I'm doing the same for the shelves. Meanwhile, back with the peanut jig, I'm using the mini jig to route the keyhole slots for the plinth. And with the lamello, I'm onto the mid panel fixings for the divider, and I'm using a 9mm packer to reference off a centre line. Twenty minutes in now and back with the peanut jig I'm using the fence jig and the drilling guide to drill out all the peanut positions on the edges. And back in Lamello country, I'm doing exactly the same to the cabinet and plinths. Notice how I'm using one plinth as a fence, so the edge of the piece being machined overhangs. Half an hour gone now and I'm using the mini jig on the plinths, drilling into the edges this time to take the peanuts. That was really awkward because the plinths are so narrow. And then starting to hammer the peanut connectors in on all the panels. Back with the lamello, I fitted the foot and I'm cutting the last of the slots in the carcass ends. And then starting to fit all the tensor connectors. There's a lot to do and I'm still at it when we pass the 40 minute mark. Meanwhile, back at the peanut factory, I've discovered that I've missed off some of the slots for the central divider, so I'm quickly routing those out. cleaning up the keyholes, and then I can start the assembly. Back with the lamello, and I'm still fitting those blasted tensos. A two-piece fitting means twice as many parts to fit, of course, whereas the one-sided peanuts seem to be going together quite nicely with a little bit of gentle persuasion. And as 50 minutes roll past, the tenso carcass is coming together quickly now. But the peanut carcass is well on the way to being complete, and just a couple of minutes later it is. The tenso carcass isn't far behind though. Ah, until this happens. Let's try that again, taking extra special care when it's turned onto the base.
and pretty much dead on the 55 minute mark. It's all clipped together, upright and in one piece. So I've got to be honest, that is not the result that I was expecting when I first set off down this path uh, of uh, plywood jigs and sort of relatively cheap peanut two connectors. But there we are, that's, that's what's happened. Two identical carcass put together in the same workshop on the same day. Uh, I am equally unfamiliar with both. I've owned the Lamello Zeta for a while, but I haven't actually used it very much. I've had the Peanut 2 um, for a little while, and again, I haven't really used it very much. I think this is only the third, maybe the fourth actual carcass that I've made with it, and only the second thing that I've made with the Peanut system and my plywood jig. Um, so yeah, quite quite an interesting little exercise that I, I'm, I, I'm, we're not going to draw any grand conclusions from this. We're not saying that you know the 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 peanut system with a dedicated router and a homemade jig is better than the Lamello system because that would just be silly. But it is interesting to see that under the same circumstances, used by the same person, you know you can get the same carcass essentially made pretty much in the same time, but at a vastly different price. Uh, I don't know what the price of the Lamello is now. Somebody said it's around about 1,500 quid. Um, certainly the connectors are around about 70 pence each, and there are 30 in this, so over 20 pounds worth of connectors alone in this carcass. Uh, with this one, of course, the uh, Peanut 2 Mini Jig, and the dedicated router and the plywood jig, I put a price on that of around 300 pounds. And the connectors themselves are around 15 pence each. So again, uh, about a fiver's worth of connectors for this one. So, you know, it's not just the, the initial purchase price you've got to look at, but also the price of the consumables as well. And I think something like the Peanut, uh, the Peanut 2 really scores on that front. If you are looking for a self-clamping connector of this type, uh, if you're not, then you're not, and it's you know there are other alternatives around. It did occur to me as well while I was making this and while I was using this. Uh, I'm I'm all jigged out for now, by the way. I'm not going to go near jigs for a little while. But it did occur to me that you could use something like this combined with a, a dedicated router like the Little Trend T4 to make a loose tenon jig, a domino jig for a router. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if that's something you might like to see in the future, not next week or the one after. I'm, <laughs> I'm done with jigs and routers for now. But that, it's, that, that got me thinking as well. Maybe you could actually make a, make a, little, uh, a little domino jig. That would be a fun, a fun little project, perhaps. But I'll leave it there for this week, I think. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks, of course, to my amazing Patreon supporters and YouTube members. But that's it for this one. Thanks ever so much for taking a look, and I'll see you next time. All right, take care.